is because of this. The price of freedom is great. And today, we remember that price. Today, we honor people who have gone to their graves in defense, in defense of our freedom. Greater love has no man than this. Then he lay down his very life. For a friend. set the tone perfectly. Uh, what Memorial Day is, uh, which is it's a long-standing tradition uh, in our country to, to, to celebrate Memorial Day. It's, it's been a Monday, federally observed Monday holiday since 1971, but celebrated since 1868 when uh, flags were placed on the graves of Union and Confederate soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery. A tradition started in 1868 that continues uh, today. Uh, and if you haven't seen pictures of this, you you saw a short clip in the video of, of Arlington National Cemetery and the, the, the white headstones that we used to see, many of which have a cross on the top. But this past week, I believe on Thursday, as they do every year, the, the 3rd U.S. Infantry uh, put flags on all of the graves. There are over 265,000 graves of American soldiers who lost their lives in battle. Flags uh, placed beside those white headstones. And if you haven't seen a picture of that, go online today or tomorrow and look at it because it's, it's incredibly powerful. But what Memorial Day is, as distinguished from Veterans Day, when we, when we honor all veterans who have served our country, uh, as distinguished from All Saints Day, when we uh, celebrate and honor those who have, uh, those uh, Christian, members of the Christian faith who have died and gone forth. Memorial Day is when we celebrate and honor the sacrifice of those who lost their lives in active military duty, uh, defending our country and, and its core values of freedom and democracy. I was reminded this week what Memorial Day means. When I was having a conversation with a, a lady here in town, uh, and I asked her you know, how she was doing and what her family was going to be doing this weekend. It was just a question, and you know, she asked me. I had a lot of you know, just general things we were going to be doing on a, a long weekend. And she said, well, 
Let me tell you, Jason, she said, this weekend is so special to me because my father died in World War II uh, in Lorraine, France, in 1944. And she said, because of that, uh, Memorial Day is so special to our family. We made a promise to each other years ago that we would always get together on Memorial Day as a family and spend it. And five years ago, we all went as a family uh, to uh, Lorraine, France, uh, Alsace-Lorraine, Alsace uh, as it used to be called, and, and to the American Memorial Cemetery in St. Abor. And she said there's 16,000 American soldiers uh, buried there, and her father was one of them. So obviously to her family, Memorial Day is a lot more than just a Monday off of work or school. Uh, it's, it's really neat. Uh, Mary's husband, Jamie, uh, a former member of the 3rd U.S. Cemetery, has, has placed those flags at Arlington and talked about what an honor it is those servicemen to do that. I want to tell you also about two more uh, ways that Memorial Day will be observed uh, tomorrow. Uh, every year on, on Memorial Day Monday, there's a, uh, at 3 o'clock, uh, a moment of silence, a moment of remembrance, uh, where we're all encouraged to pause and take a few few moments in silent reflection for Memorial Day and what that means to us uh, and other Americans. And then also it's a tradition for anyone who flies the American flag to fly it at half-mast uh, on Memorial Day morning until noon when it can Tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we have a video uh, defining freedom to us as well. Just trying to be a father, raise a daughter and a son, be a lover to their mother, and everything to everyone. Up and down, I'm bright and early, I'm all business in my seat. Yeah, I'm dressed up for success, my head down to my boots. I don't do it for the money, there's bills that I can't. I don't do it for the glory, I just do it anyway. Providing for our futures, our responsibility. 
lives the lives that we choose to live. Lord, forgive us, because so often we take those freedoms for granted. And Lord, sometimes the freedom that you give us to choose means we make the wrong choices. Lord, we are so thankful for the sacrifice that that uh, those that have gone before us have made. Lord, to give us the freedoms that we have today. But Lord, we're even more grateful for the sacrifice of your Son. That means when we abuse our freedoms, when we make those wrong choices, Lord, that you have uh, given us the freedom to choose forgiveness, Lord, to choose your Son. Lord, as we continue worship this morning, and Lord, we speak of freedom, Lord, help us to remember, Lord, not just the, the freedoms of our country, Lord, but to, to uh, know and to experience this morning the freedom of your love. dreams in your hands. Lord, we love you so much. We just pray that you would use this time to bring you glory. Lord, help us this morning to choose to worship you and to give ourselves more fully to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you stand with us?
Sunday is a little bit different. Obviously, it's Memorial Day weekend. People are out of town. We're celebrating. Uh, and, and lest you get the wrong idea, all the people that were on the slideshow, some of them are still living. Okay? <laughs> we, just, we just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> but uh, that slideshow is actually people from our own congregation uh, and relatives of people from our own congregation. So we wanted to let you, wanted to let you know about that. Jeremy, that video, if we can try to get that back up, we'll do it at the end of the service. Okay, okay. I think we're good now. They were? Okay. We'll do that at the end of the service. And we had a, had a really neat video we'll close on today. A lot of times these uh, HD videos, they don't play well with, with some of our thoughts there. So anyway, I'm glad that you're here today. Uh, if you're a guest with us, we're delighted that you're here with us. Today is a little bit unusual in the sense we don't have quite as much music. But we wanted to take a moment to, uh, to remember those who've been faithful in the service of our country. And I know that you appreciate that as well. And we're talking about freedom. This morning we want to talk a little bit about freedom. And, and what freedom means exactly. And, and we're going with the title, Freedom Isn't Free. And that's kind of a teaser, but I think most of us realize that. But I want to read to you a passage of Scripture. And we're going to basically be reading from, a feed, excuse me, from Galatians this morning. Uh, and the text that's up there, I'm going to read one verse before we go there. And, and chapter 5 of Galatians starts this way. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. And do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And then he jumps to the passage again in verse 13 where it says, For you are called to freedom, brethren. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love be servants to one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, Although the, the passage that we've just read refers ultimately to the subject of justification, here the Apostle Paul, I think, is trying to aim us. He's trying to explicitly drive home this ethical dimension of the body and spirit, okay, the opposition of body and spirit, the opposition between life according to the flesh and life according to the spirit. You go, what does that have to do, do with freedom? Well, freedom, according to Paul, is linked with the command to love. We need to love, and that's how we express our freedom. And it, it may seem that Paul is only contrasting freedom with the law, and the law with freedom, but that's not necessarily so. Uh, if you look at it, if you go back and kind of read the whole book of Galatians, and kind of put it all in context, uh, Paul, he, he's emphasizing this kind of ethical uh, subordination of freedom to love. You know, in fact, I don't think we would be mis misrepresenting Paul or I don't think we would be misrepresenting the gospel if we said that freedom is impossible without love. Love is that element in which the whole law is fulfilled. Paul referred to it. Jesus referred to it. And, and, and Jesus was ultimately the representation of God's love to us, right? I mean, God loved us and sent his son. Yeah, sent his son. You know, in, in uh, 1 John 4, verse, verse 9 and 10, it says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for us. And this is love. This love in, in the context, in the content of the greatest commandment of the gospel that is we love one another. And Paul ties that to our freedom. So Christ set us free in order that we might remain free. And precisely he links that with freedom and the commandment to love. So to understand the vocation of freedom this way, that is, we are called to freedom, brethren, means giving a form to the ethos in which life according to the Spirit is realized. What does all that mean? We'll get to that in just a minute. See, the, the danger of, of wrongly understanding freedom is quite likely, and Paul very clearly points this out, writing in the same context, verse, verse we read a minute ago, he says, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love be servants of one another. So he, he opens the door there that we can have a bad or an irresponsible use of freedom. And he's opened the door there for us to consider that it, it can be used irresponsibly. In other words, Paul warns us of the possibility 
of making a bad use of freedom. Such a use would be in opposition to the liberation of the human spirit that was carried out by Christ on the cross. If you use it bad, you're denying the sacrifice of Christ. And it contradicts that freedom in which Christ has set us free. Paul keeps saying, Christ has set you free. You're a new creation in Christ. You don't act like it. <laughs> that seems to be what Paul says. Because you see, like, like political freedom, which is usually bought at the cost of human life, spiritual freedom was bought with a price too. It wasn't free. It was bought with a price. The cost of freedom was the cross. The death of our Savior on the cross. That is the cost of freedom. The death of the Son of God. His sacrifice ransomed the souls of all those who will believe and accept. So freedom isn't free. You see, we, we're, we're very quick to claim the freedom part, aren't we? Let's be honest. We want our freedom. We've got freedom in this country especially. Because if we have political freedom, we have social freedom, we have all those other things. So we think spiritual freedom just kind of comes with the package, right? In other countries where they have no political or social freedom, they treasure their spiritual freedom. Because that's the only freedom they have. And they recognize that as something that comes from God. Something because of the nature of the sacrifice of Christ. But see, we embrace the personal freedom part. But like a, like a lot of other freedoms, we deny the responsibility that comes with that freedom. We deny the love one another part. But that's the responsibility that comes with the freedom. And in doing so, when we do that, we deny the very lordship of Jesus Christ in our life. In effect, we're saying... Lord, give me freedom to choose, but don't hold me responsible for my, for my wrong choices, and don't hold me responsible for getting to know you better so I can make better choices. And we do that all the time. We portray that with our actions. And here's what it looks like in America today, and I hate to say this, but, it, but it's true. Land of free, home of the brave. In America today, here's what it looks like. There is a growing trend in churches, and it frightens me. It really does. The trend in churches across our country People stream into the church building to be entertained by music, drama, whatever else is offered up. There's nothing wrong with any of those elements of worship. But when your motivation is purely to be entertained for an hour during the day, it makes you feel good about yourself. You know, hey, what's wrong with that picture? They stream in, and that's their expectation. And then they sit, and they listen to a preacher, another human being, tell them what to believe. And they never question. That's frightening. It ought to frighten you. Why would intelligent, motivated people blindly believe whatever is preached without question about their most important relationship? A relationship with God. I'll tell you why. Because we're lazy. <laughs> we're lazy. We are raising the laziest generation, perhaps in human history. Just follow along. Spiritually lazy people want the freedom, but they don't want the responsibility that accompanies that freedom by necessity. They don't want it. Preacher, just tell me what to believe. Don't challenge me to read and pray and get to know God better and establish my own faith. Just tell me what to believe. Where is personal responsibility before Christ? Give me freedom, but don't hold me accountable. Where is responsibility? And pews all around the country, well, maybe chairs in some place. You know, <laughs> pews are sacred. Yeah, you know, the pews and chairs all around the country are packed this morning with people who are convinced that they are not accountable for the use of the freedom that Christ gives them. They would admit to it, but their actions and if we're, as we've already discovered, freedom is, is tied to an understanding that, that it, is, it is given so we may glorify God through our love and our service, be servants to one another. Not for the purpose of glorifying self or satisfying the flesh. Paul makes that very clear. So freedom isn't free. It's bought with a price. And it carries...
carries with it the responsibility of love and servanthood. It carries with it the responsibility to walk according to the Spirit, not the flesh. And you say, preacher, you know, how do I walk according to the Spirit? If you could see my daily schedule, you'd go, are you kidding me? How can I walk according to the Spirit? And we talked about this in Wednesday night in the Foundations class, but let me give you just a little synopsis of where we kind of came down on it, at least where I came down on it. The other people in the class may give you a different opinion. But, but as we talked about the, 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 quote, mundane of the daily schedule, you know, how do you live according to the Spirit when you've got all this stuff that's got to be done? And I think, at least in my mind, we settled on attitude. You see, if you, if you, if you have young children and they're very active, and, 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 and you think, how in the world can getting them you know, cleaned up and dressed and they cleaned up again and redressed and, and you know, how is that spiritually fulfilling at all? What, what is that doing for the kingdom? How is that spirit filled? You know, all these activities, running here and there, getting people here and there. And, and, you know, if you think about, especially with children, you're not just wiping their faces, patting them on the head, giving them words of encouragement, kissing their boo-boos when they fall. You're, you're not just doing those tasks. You are blessing that child. And as a result of that, you are blessing every generation after that child. That is the spiritual function. When you care about someone that's in the, in the cutting society at work and they're, they're talking about their hurts and their pains and everything else, rather than just saying, well, that's okay, I'll, I'll pray for you. you know, if, if you really take a moment to engage with that person, talk with them, care for them, minister to them in a genuine way, that is a spiritually fulfilling spirit How do we use our freedom in Christ? We love one another. We serve one another. It's a matter of attitude. And Paul very clearly ties our everyday desires and activities to an awareness of walking by the Spirit. Go back and read the whole chapter 5. Go back and read it. And, and then this week, pray every single day for a filling of the Holy Spirit. To guide your thoughts guide your actions, to guide your attitude. Do that. But do that only if you want to know what true freedom in Christ is. Amen? Praise God. Gracious Father, we thank you for the freedom that you've given us in Christ. God, you're a merciful God. You're a God that provided the payment for our freedom. In Christ, we are new creation. We are free, but we are free to serve you. Pray that in our hearts and in our minds we would understand what that freedom means and we would fully comprehend the nature of the sacrifice that purchased that freedom for us. God, we love you and we say we love you, but we pray that our actions and our thoughts and our attitudes would line up with what we say. Father, now as, as we continue in a time of worship, we pray that you would touch our hearts, you would allow us to know you more clearly. Stand with us as we continue to worship, and don't don't forget to stay for the video at the very end, or with the video now. At the very end of the video, we'll leave you. 